Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to add some geometry to our game. And we're going to take a look at the difference between shapes and geometry inside of Unreal Engine. If this is the first time that you're joining me, you can uh, check out the rest of the videos here at Putting on the Fritz 3D Visualization and uh, kind of get caught up or just kind of pick and choose the things that you need for your game and um, then just kind of watch and see what's going on. And come back more often, subscribe if you like uh, what you see and like the videos. Otherwise, uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let me get my head out of the way too. There we go. All right, so here is where we use shapes, right? We use them and we scaled this one up. We made it 200 by 200 so our shapes worked out well. Um, and then we also uh, did some walls. I showed you how to modify the material on the shapes right right here okay and one thing about it though is it looks okay on this side but when we take a look at it on the edge you can see that the material is all really scrunched up right well let's take a look at the reason why we pick a spot out here okay so if I go to my place actors and if you don't have this window up up here where this uh, box is with the plus hit the arrow hit the little down arrow and right here is the place actors panel you can also work off of this and find the various things that I'm using right here is the shapes and then um, one thing that I don't see on here is the geometry which we're going to use here in a minute okay so these are shapes this is should look familiar the cube here's the sphere we use for our player the cube we made for our walls and if I click on the ground you'll see that it shows it is a cube right here okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull another cube in and I'm going to add a uh, material to this, okay? I already have some downloaded a brick texture from my bridge. So I'm going to go into my content, into my mega scans, surfaces, and I'm going to find that brick. And I think it's just brick wall. I just wanted a simple brick wall. I'm going to grab that material and just drop it right there onto my cube. All right, there it is. It looks like a brick wall, okay? And that's because right now it's all set up as a cube. If I scale this though, and I start to shrink it down to make it into a platform, things get kind of bad real quick, right? And that's because this geometry still sees itself as a static mesh cube, even though we have modified it from that, okay? So there is a, a uh, shape or a system that uh, is inside of Unreal Engine that we can use to kind of work around that all right we could of course modify the materials until we get it to the way we kind of want it to look but that would make our bricks very very tiny in order to be able to make it so they didn't look so squished but then on the top they wouldn't match up so it just wasn't just not going to work with that <clears throat> so what i'm talking about is here the geometry so when we have this place actors open and we have a bunch of additional things and options that are in here one of them is geometry i click on it and you can see we've got some of the same stuff uh, one of them is a box okay and I'm going to go ahead and pull that out here and we'll just drop it. Now, because I was using the material for the bricks that I used over here, it automatically applied them onto my BSP here or my geometry. They used to be referred to as BSP. I don't see that in the Unreal Engine um, documentation anymore. Instead, it's listed as a geometry brush, which is what it has always been. Uh, but there was a name BSP, which Truthfully, I don't remember what that stands for anymore. But anyway, um, what this really was meant for was to kind of block out levels, okay? And you can see here, here's the, the block out area. And then it was used to kind of get scale and size and make sure everything fit within your game area while you uh, also waited for 3D models and uh, modelers and artists to actually make the models for you to place into the game. This allowed you to uh, work out the the dynamics of the game, work on any of the uh, programming. So this stuff could happen kind of simultaneously while you're waiting for the the good, the good looking models to come out, right? Um, but there is one thing that we can also do with it. We can also use it as a simple filler, okay? And a simple filler is for basically simple models, kind of like a platform. All it is is just a, um, a, a cube that we're going to shape into a you know a platform that we can use as an obstacle we can also use it for short walls to kind of uh, 
corral or direct our uh, character through certain areas, maybe create a maze out of it. Lots of different things we can do. We can use it for blocking uh, as a visual barrier. So uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to learn how to use this and we're going to turn it into a static mesh once we get done uh, creating it. All right. So let's go ahead and jump back over and uh, see how to do that. So with this uh, selected, I'm going to go up here to the selection mode up here and I'm going to change it into brush editing because that's what this is. This is a brush. And you can see when I do that, it takes on this kind of, it kind of fades out the material a little bit and we can see the corners where the vertices all line up are all highlighted blue and we can see the edges and I can select if I'm in the edit mode I can select any of these okay I can also select this all right now on the corners so several different ways to um, work with this uh, shape now I'm gonna go ahead and pretend like I'm not in Maya and uh, go to select the face here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on extrude and it says it only works with local coordinate systems. What that means is right up here, we've got to change it from world coordinate for this to a local coordinate. We're going to go ahead and close that and with it selected as extrude, it's already changed it to this right here for us. We can see that what we're doing is we're pulling out the face here, right? Okay. And as everywhere I stop, it gives me some more vertices. Okay. So that's one way to get the length. We can also, um, now I'm going to go ahead and change back into my edit mode. We can also select, I'm going to go ahead and undo what I just did because I don't want to work with the extrude. We can also select the corners. Yeah, control button, there we go. Shift button. There we go. Not the control button. We don't hold the shift button. We can select. Let me see. No, it's the control button. I don't know why I did that cut. Okay. And then um, kind of move around it, select them all. And I can drag this up. And I can kind of shape it still. And if you notice, what's happening here is that the brick is still staying kind of the way it was before. It wasn't, it's not, it's not uh, crunching down. It's not scaling down like it did over here on this one. All right, um, I'm also going to show you that we can, if we're not going to change it, we're not going to extrude it any, uh, and even with extrusion, it will still work. Um, over here, we have these brush settings. You notice I haven't done is I haven't scaled it any, okay? I'm not really going to play around with the scale, but so what we can do instead is over here where the brush settings are, we can change it here, right? I can scale it, make it longer this way. And actually, I want to make it longer on the Y axis. So we can have it next to that. And then we can also shrink it down here in the Z axis. And I think I'm going to go to like 45. Okay. And now we've shrunk it down. All right. One of the things about this, uh, these as well is we can bring them out and use them to, you know, additive, which is what this mode is. Additive means we can see it. And then we can also do a subtractive type right down here. We can select subtractive. So if I were to go back into here, go to select mode and it becomes solid again. I can bring a box back out here. I can scale this box down to maybe something like 30. Nope, that was the wrong direction. I want to go, I think I want to leave that one at 200. Leave this one at 30. Let's see here. Let me just play with this until I get the look I want. Do it like that. Scale this up a little bit more. What I'm trying to do is make a big enough hole for the ball to our ball to fall through. So it's kind of like an obstacle on this uh, platform. And then I'm going to drop this down to like 50. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change it from additive to subtractive. And I can place it down on top of this and move it around. I want to put it so it goes all the way through to create a hole. Maybe I don't have enough space. There we go. All right, so now I have an actual hole, and I have to dodge it on this platform as a player, or I'll fall through it. Hopefully, I made it big enough so our player doesn't actually get stuck in it. That's one of the things you got to think about. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make it just a little bit bigger, maybe 90 by, nine, by 100, 100 and 
Maybe 110. Okay, come on. All right, so our ball has the, the ability to fall through that, okay? And it's something we have to treat as an obstacle. All right, so now I've got that set up as one platform. Um, so let's go ahead and convert it to a static mesh so we can use it in our game and it stays that way and it'll move together as one piece. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do first, I'm going to go to my content drawer and I'm going to go back to my main level here. I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to um, name this folder um, models. We could also call it meshes, but I'm just going to call it models. Double click on that, and that's where we're going to put this model at. Okay, So now um, I'm going to go to my outliner, and I'm going to select both this box brush here, and I'm going to hold the control button and select the one above it so I have them both selected. Okay, Now, I haven't really gone over everything that we can do with all of these different settings over here, but the one thing we need to be in is not in the... Uh, brush editing mode you have to be in the select mode for this to, for you to be able to do this and for this window to come up and then right over here you're going to find a uh, error a, a spot that says advanced it probably is not open you have to hit the down arrow to open it and there's some other choices we have to uh, change this particular um, geometry but what we're going to do is we're going to go for this right here create static mesh okay i'm going to select create static mesh and i'm going to select where i want to put it and I'm going to name this SM underscore, and I'm going to call this um, platform with hole, something like that. Okay. And um, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Okay. And create static mesh. And the reason why you need them both selected is so that the hole and the platform itself becomes one piece if you don't do that uh one of them will kind of disappear and i mean it'll still be there but it won't actually create a hole it'll become a solid piece so you have to select them both your additive and your subtractive or your multiple pieces of geometry whatever it might be in order for it to all to work together and become this one static mesh and the great thing about it is is now i have an appearance that i want for my particular uh, object here okay the other thing is uh, now, if I wanted to, I could scale this and my geometry will stay correct, okay? Except for when I go to crunch it because it will crunch just like it did before, okay? So as long as you keep your scale left and right even, it stays that way. And if we take a look over here, we see that our static mesh actually becomes that shape. Okay, it's no longer a cube. It's no longer not a, a cylinder or anything like that. It is recognized as being this shape for our static mesh. Okay, so that's one uh, platform. The other thing I want to do real quick is to show how we can use this as a ramp as well. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to pull out a box again. But there are other ones you can play with, certainly. I'm going to pull this out. Okay, again, uh, it doesn't have our, this time it didn't add any of the materials because I don't have one selected. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select, whoops, i got to go into my, the brush editing. I'm going to select this edge, and I'm going to select, hold the control button, select that edge, hit W. I'm going to push this down so it's pretty much connecting there very close okay and probably want to select all four of those so I'm going to select that one as well as the other one so now I've got them all four selected and I'm going to just drag them out a little bit give me more of a ramp appearance and since I'm going to try to match it up to that height there might as well do it right now I'm going to select that corner there and that corner there and i'm not doing this very good at all all right let me change my viewpoint on this okay select that corner select that corner i'm going to push it down a little bit give it more of a ramp 
more of a gentle slope. Try to get it so it's close to that. We can always modify this ramp a little bit later. But once it's scaled to a size, it's kind of stuck to that size. Okay. All right. So now I've got that all set up. And you can see when we're doing this, I'm not stretching the squares. Okay. If I were to go back into my select mode and select the whole thing, hit R on my keyboard, if I were to pull it, you see that the squares stretch. Okay. We don't want to do that. We want to keep our squares looking square on our surface, and that's what's going to make our material look correct when we put it on there. All right. So I can go ahead and either apply the material now, or I can wait until after I turn this into a static mesh. I'm going to go back into select. I'm going to select it. Okay. In the select mode, yeah. And go into my outliner, make sure I have it selected. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and go back down here, create my static mesh. Again, I'm going to put it into my models. And I'm going to call this one SM underscore ramp. Maybe this is a large ramp. Large. I'm going to go ahead and create that. And now, if I were to go back in and find my material, yeah, brick wall. Grab it, throw it on there. See that my material. Looks pretty decent. It's not to the exact same scale here. And this is where we could play around with different material instances to get our scales to match. So basically, I would come in here, duplicate this one, and uh, I would then play around with the settings on it. So Control D, I'll call this uh, ramp MI ramp brick. So I know what it's going to. All right, I'm going to pull that, throw that on there, replace that one. Double click the ramp material. Go here to the tiling. And this is where I could start playing around with the scale on it to try to match the scale for everything else. Since it's very small at one, I'm going to go down to like 0.5 and start playing with it until I get it to kind of match what I have there. Get a little bit closer. Okay, so now that we've uh, got these made, the additional thing we need to do is, um, if we were to hit play right now, what would happen is my ball would just go right through everything. So it's because, again, these were completely just... Uh, Simple geometry, okay? So what we need to do is we need to collider to it so that we can fix that problem, right? So let's go ahead and pull up the ramp. Okay, and for the ramp, we're gonna go ahead and do a simple collision. Uh, we're gonna do an auto convex. We're gonna go ahead and apply that. That should work just fine. And now let's go ahead and go back if we save this. Okay, so to add collision to the ramp is going to be a little bit more complicated than just coming up here and selecting one of these. We are going to select one, but we're going to have to modify it. All right, so um, let's just start with a simplified box collision. And I'm going to hit R, and I'm going to scale this down just a little bit. All right, so we're going to have to create our own custom one so that the hole will actually work like a hole because if we leave it the way it is right now, it'll just roll right over the top of it, okay? So let's go ahead and just kind of customize this a little bit. Um, it's gonna be a little time consuming, but I think you kind of get the idea of what I'm doing here. So we got that one. So now I'm gonna go ahead and just uh, um, duplicate it and go up here, you can go to collision, you can uh, duplicate, so select a collision. W and pull it back over this way. I think I'm going to change my way I'm looking at this real quick. Okay. Hit R because I'm going to try to fill in that section down here. Way too much. Down here. I think it's too little. There we go. Maybe something like that. 
I have to make it a little longer. Now, this video is going to be a little bit longer than I intended it to be because getting into the details of adding colliders to these, but we need to have colliders so that we can allow them to work the way we want them to. Up here, don't forget, you can turn off your snaps. I turn off my scale snap, and although it seems like it should be helping me, <laughs> not really. All right, good enough for that one. I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually, I don't know why I'm having so much issue here. All right, um, try changing my mouse out. Maybe that's it. It's a little better. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. Hit W again, move it into place. Okay, I try to. Right angle on it so I can see what I'm doing. Now the collider can be as precise as you need it to be. Um, if you're just trying to get it so that the hole works like a hole, then you may not need to get this precise. It's really up to you. I'm gonna duplicate this one one more time. Now there are other types of colliders that we could use. We could go over and we could modify over here on the right hand side, right here where it says project default. But we need to simplify a simple um, type collider to be able to make these movable. And we also don't need to have uh, more calculations happening than necessary. So if we can just have a, as much of a simplified collider as possible, it will help us out is on many, as many objects as we can. All right, so that's close. Let me go ahead and get this. down a little bit and scale just a little bit more something like that's probably going to be okay all right let's go ahead and save it now we've already done the one to the ramp we've already applied one here and my ramp at my uh, platform is pretty low and I'm not going to change it right now so what's going to happen is when I go to test this out I should be able to go up the ramp and I should be able to go into the hole and I'm going to get stuck because that was poor game design. My player is now stuck and I have to quit. But we can see that that is how the uh, um, geometry can have uh, collisions added to it so that we can use it inside of our game. Okay. And now wherever we move it, our geometry will, of course, move with it. And uh, our colliders will, I mean, our colliders will move with our geometry. And we should be good to go. All right. So... That is going to be it for this video. Uh, just a real quick look at uh, the way to use these uh, geometry that's available inside of Unreal Engine to make uh, simple uh, objects and simple models that we can use. Now you can turn this on the edge, you can make a wall out of it, you can make a platform that doesn't have a hole in it, those type of things. Now in the next video we're going to take a platform that we've used to make, that we use this geometry to make and we're going to add a blueprint to it so that it will move. And I will show you that next time. So I look forward to seeing you. If you liked what you saw, please like the video and subscribe.